Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining the discussion today on multi-cloud strategies. My name is Faye Hutzel, and I'm the Director of Product Marketing for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And I have the pleasure of welcoming to the program today Dave McCarthy, who is the VP of Cloud and Edge Infrastructure at IDC. Dave, great to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Faye. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Dave, we're seeing some really interesting trends in the market. In fact, more and more enterprises are opting to adopt multi-cloud deployments. Given the fact that you focus on infrastructure at IDC, can you expand on the trends that you're seeing? Yeah, certainly. I mean, there's a lot of exciting developments going on. And you're absolutely right that probably number one on the list is multi-cloud. And probably a close follow-on to that is how multi-cloud affects uh, things like cloud economics. Okay, and let's let's start with multi-cloud architectures. First of all, how do you defi define that term? Yeah, that's uh, always a good place to start. In the simplest of terms, it reflects the reality that most enterprises are using more than one cloud provider. Sometimes it's unintentional, an after effect of M&A activity where individual companies have standardized on different platforms that they now must integrate. But increasingly, the approach has become intentional where enterprises are choosing a best of breed approach to cloud services. And so you're basically saying that this is becoming a lot more common. In other words, a lot more common now versus five years ago. And why is that? And along the same lines, what are the percentages of organizations that you're seeing that are opting for multi-cloud deployment options? Yeah, I mean, this is good timing that we're having this conversation because IDC just conducted another global survey around cloud infrastructure and adoption trends. And we found that globally, 64% of companies are now in a position where they're using public cloud providers. And if you add in the addition of like private clouds, in addition to that, so sort of rounding out the full multi-cloud story, that number jumps to 70%. Wow, that's that's tremendous. Uh, and then can we hone in on the deployment choices that a lot of these organizations are considering today? Yeah, certainly. I mean, IDC is seeing enterprises leverage infrastructure from multiple public clouds in many different ways. Like one example, for, for, for instance, would be like an enterprise that must run certain workloads in Oracle Cloud and others in Azure. There's also a proliferation of cloud platforms moving outside of hyperscale cloud data centers into on-premises facilities, including these newer sort of categories of edge locations. As you know, Dave, Oracle has a strategic partnership with Microsoft that culminates in the Oracle Azure Interconnect, where we bring interoperability between two key platform providers. And this is really ideal for folks that are running workloads on both OCI and Azure, because now they have a, a low latency private connection that allows for data to flow freely between both uh, platforms. And in fact, most of our customers cite the Oracle Azure Interconnect as the backbone of their operations. And I just want to hone in on to that flexibility. Do you think that's a competitive edge for us today? Because I, I, it seems fairly unmatched in the market. Yes, absolutely. I, mean, I think as you start getting to these more complex workloads, you're seeing, as I mentioned earlier, companies look for a best of breed approach. And absolutely, you know, it's, it's obvious in the market that Oracle and Microsoft have many mutual customers across all verticals. So that partnership that you mentioned and that interconnect where joint customers can migrate their workloads to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and Microsoft Azure without the need for complex re-architecture or re-platforming, it's absolutely a, a key advantage that you're delivering to your customers. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And that's been our intention from the beginning. More and more also what we're seeing is that Azure customers are looking at OCI as a highly strategic investment. In other words, adopting OCI is very much complementary to their Azure investments because we're bringing certain capabilities and built-in efficiencies with the Oracle Azure Interconnect that they wouldn't otherwise have access to. So this is really kind of taking that uh, the option of here's the best of world both worlds and putting it at their, their at their doorstep but i want to you know hone in more specifically on the rationale behind these multiple public cloud choices what are other distinct advantages dave would you say that enterprises are you know proactively after i think what we're getting to is the evolution of how enterprises are looking at public cloud services if you look 5 years ago uh, enterprises were adopting cloud in a very opportunistic fashion. 
um, versus today where they have switched to a very you know, cloud first mentality. And what that really means is a, a transition from simple workloads to more complex workloads. And so I think that's driving a lot of the use of, of multiple cloud, not to mention the fact that, you know, when you look at things uh, more globally, you know, enterprises are trying to add an additional layer of resiliency by spreading these workloads across multiple uh, cloud providers. And in some cases, it's just a matter of which cloud provider has the best service uh, in a particular region or country. When, when you look at the hybrid scenarios, there's also another factor around performance. I mean, certain real-time applications are sensitive to network latency and need to be located closer uh, in the field to where data is generated. Like take manufacturing, for example. Uh, milliseconds matter in safety and quality use cases. There's also a, a growing demand for more control over where data resides, whether due to regulations like GDPR in Europe or corporate governance policies. That's that's great. And, and what about database services in support of multi-cloud strategies? Where do you think, Dave, Oracle is hitting the mark today? Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the original value propositions uh, with cloud was to relieve some of the management um, responsibilities from IT personnel, you know, to allow them to focus more on the business value and less the sort of the nuts and bolts, if you will. And one of the places where Oracle really sets itself apart is in its autonomous database services which are self-managing, self-tuning, and self-securing. And what's great about that is that those autonomous database services aren't just available in the cloud regions, but you can also deploy them on-premises with Cloud at Customer, whether we're talking about the Exadata Cloud at Customer offering uh, or the newer dedicated region Cloud at Customer. Absolutely. And now I want to shift to sort of the related topic of economics that you alluded to at the beginning of uh, our discussion. So how does this trend towards multi-cloud actually start to intersect with, uh, with cloud economics? Yeah, in a survey conducted by IDC, we asked enterprises, what are the top factors influencing the choice of cloud provider? And no doubt topping the list was total cost of operations. You know, as usage of cloud infrastructure grows, there's more pressure on organizations to better manage the costs. And so how are companies tackling this concern? You can really think about it in three areas. The first area is operational, becoming smarter on how to right size environments, better matching the needs of the workloads with the underlying resources, and also looking for ways of driving more automation and how these deployments are managed. This is an area where Oracle is doing some interesting things with both those flexible and autonomous services. And we talked about you know, the autonomous database side, but you know, we should also mention autonomous Linux, which is also a self-tuning operating system with advanced capabilities like automatic zero-time patching, uh, known exploit detection, and a high-performance kernel. Um, just another way of sort of relieving some of those management capabilities. And then there's the flexible side. I mean, so much of early cloud services were rigid. You, know, you had to fit into their t-shirt sizes of small, medium, large. And you know, even as providers grow those sizes, the reality is you still want to be able to right size the infrastructure that you're provisioning to the workload needs. And this is something where Oracle does with their flexible VM uh, instances, allowing customers to increase or decrease capacity by adding CPUs or memory to their existing footprint. Uh, you also do this on the network side with the flexible load balancer, providing that sort of minimum bandwidth and then also auto scaling to the maximum bandwidth required you know, automatically. Um, these are all areas I think that um, help drive that economic value and something that Oracle does differently than other cloud providers. You know, the next area after that is architectural. You know, sometimes just lifting and shifting a workload to the cloud is not optimal. The best results often come when you design specifically for the cloud operating model. I know Oracle can help here. Can you share how OCI assists customers with workload migration? Yeah, absolutely. This has been very intentional for us from the very beginning. So we want we our our goal has always been to focus uh, on the customer and sort of ensure that they have ease around migration. And so Oracle introduced Oracle Cloud Lift services to provide guidance from engineers on planning, architecting, prototyping, and fundamentally managing cloud migrations. And I would say that the key factor here is time and resources, right? Clients can move workloads in weeks, uh, potentially days in lieu of months by leveraging these included services for customer tenancies. And I, I would also add that they have the ability to leverage value programs such as Oracle Support Rewards that bring savings that is attached to their consumption on the platform. 
That's great. And then finally, you know, commercial terms can make a huge difference, especially in multi-cloud deployments. A hidden cost that many don't realize at first is data egress fees. This is an important consideration when moving data between clouds and customer facilities. I know OCI charges for data egress differently than other cloud providers. Can you expand on this, Faye? Sure, Dave. Um, so at OCI, we offer low networking prices that enable customers to move uh, significant quantities of data for, for significantly less dollars. Inbound data transfer is free, and we offer a high threshold for free outbound data transfer. Um, the first 10 terabytes is free uh, for each regional zone um, or product SKU, and after that, outbound data transfer rates are largely based on geography. Uh, let me sort of also hone in on um, a business value study that IDC and yourself recently conducted for us. Um, can you highlight the benefits that OCI customers have experienced as a result of uh, uh, that, that study that you folks conducted? Yes, absolutely. You know, of course, every cloud provider wants to paint itself in the best picture, but it's always great to have some uh, you know, third-party data that backs up some of these claims. And so what IDC did was conduct a research uh, study that explored the value and benefits that organizations received by moving to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and how that helped optimize their IT infrastructure operations. And I'll just go through a couple of highlights here that I thought were meaningful. So again, customers that moved to OCI saw a 35% more efficient IT infrastructure staff. And it also led to a 40% decrease and the time spent doing things like keeping the lights on tasks. And, and those are two really important things that I, speak, that I think speak to efficiency. And they also translate into you know, benefits to the organization. So these companies also saw an 87% reduction in unplanned downtime, which translated into 25,000 productive end user hours gained uh, over, the, over the study period. So it's not just about you know, reducing costs, but it's also about increasing value. And in fact, you know, the final stat I'll pull out right now is that these companies saw a 138% increase in the time spent on innovation. So again, I think this really translates into how people wanted to experience cloud, you know, saving them the time on sort of management tasks and increasing the time on in creating business value. Those are great stats, Dave, and I really appreciate you sharing them. It's, it's really wonderful to have independent data to show the value that OCI continues to provide to its uh, customers. We are steadfastly committed to enabling customers to get more out of their public cloud experience uh, with respect to performance, consistency and experience and economics, as you, uh, as you alluded to. And uh, so much of what you have shared today is a validation of our ongoing efforts Thank you again for, for your time and expertise, Dave. Thanks, Faye. It was great being here today. And I absolutely see that Oracle is making great strides in how people think about cloud infrastructure and bringing more value to its customers going forward.